Hear the voice of the bars, whose present, past, and future sees, whose ears have heard the holy word that walked among the ancient trees, calling the lapsed soul and weeping in the evening dew, that might control the starry pole and fallen, fallen light renew. O earth, O earth, return. Arise out of thy dewy grass. Night is worn, and the morn rises from the slumberous mass. Turn away no more. Why wilt thou turn away? The starry floor, the watery shore, are given thee to the break of day. Welcome back, everyone. This is Seth Esposa, Black Earth Productions, Blue Flame Healing Arts. We call science back here with another segment. And today, I'm speaking with initiate Michael Ivy. How's things going with you, man? It's going really well. Since the first initiation in December and since Ulfidnar training, there's been this upswing of energy and highly cathartic. It's been beautiful at times, the experiences. It's been painful and very healing. Last week or so, I had all your videos on shuffle, just being in stillness and meditating and healing. I just had them running. Even when I was sleeping, <laughs> it was funny waking up to some of the music. I just learned a lot about flowing with the Aesir, which is timeless. You have the Vanir, which is time bound. And, and then there seems to be this ambassadorship in between. And I had some questions about that. But part of me was envisioning this Emerald Covenant, Bridge to Tara, embracing this within the context of planetary high magic and moving the earth back within oneself okay. outside the 23.5 degree shift into nonsense and back into truth on the universal tree of life so that solar spile and all of these ignitions can start to take place and that's what i'm feeling so again the five areas that we are working to master physical mental emotional spiritual and temporal give me a quick summary I'm coming up on seven days of my dry fast. I'm turning off PKA. I'm activating my stem cells. I'm back to a very healthy weight. I've maintained my muscle mass and taking care of myself physically. I have all the foods and supplements ready for cooking healthy food, flushed out the parasite, you know, everything that tells my brain to eat sugar. So physically good. Emotionally, it's been consistent, but there are moments of deep reverence and connection to the feminine and masculine within. I'm going stop you right there, man. There's no such thing as a feminine within you as a man. That's the discrepancy in terms of how I teach, because it's not like that in reality. There's no balance in the feminine force within you. It's positive right. negative charge of the energy force. That's so, the yin-yang. The moon energy, would that be the negative charge? The positive would be the sun? The moon is the moon. The sun is the sun. That has nothing to do with what I'm getting at. I'm talking about the wand of fire, positive and negative charge of the energy force, electromagnetics. And then the third energy, which is higher force, meets that in terms of the portal. So you're pulling up from the lower template and down from the upper template into the center of your chest. Right. That's how that operates in terms of knowing how to wield the energy force correctly. You know, two negatives can't fucking connect and, and the energies are repelling. I don't care if it's happening with the moon, the sun, or whatever archetype you're working with. And that's... The dichotomy in terms of how triangulation operates and then everything's opposed against itself in the reality field especially within the individual when they're trying to harmonize things in terms of actual templating if you're a man you're meant to be a fucking man if you're a woman you're meant to be a woman not assuming masculine or feminine energies vice versa does that make sense yeah that's new age distortion it is a new age distortion yeah thank you for that clarification that's exactly what it is once you have connection with the higher force, that's the ability to create with the energy field. Because otherwise, it's just chaotic, distorted, and repelling, like you said. But once it bring that triangle up, this triangle down into that center, that's where you become the cause point and the fulcrum, right? Yes. Yeah, that's a work in progress for me, but I'm feeling that big time. Mentally, just very clear. Sometimes distortions coming in. I, I'm just trying to just like stay in... Yeah, we are in the shadow period of Mercury. Mercury just went direct. You still might get some of that stuff come up from the past. Yeah, there's been this dependence on energies that weren't an equal give and take. I went backwards a little bit. I don't need that anymore. So I totally might have lost focus in the fulcrum. Um, the circle, that's fucking powerful, dude. It is. <laughs> the Ganunga Gap is, man. Cool. There's a difference between Ganunga Gap and the Abyss. And a lot of people that uh, brought things forth in terms of the Nordic tradition equate the two. 
is the same, and they are not the same. When Odin spied the runes from Gnunga Gap, he wasn't pulling forth the Dark Gods in context of the Abyss. He spied the runes, Fire Letter Codex. So there's a difference between the two. And the difference between those that are into Dark Sorcery, which does consist the ultimate evil in context, but also the false cold light gridworks of consciousness that have been laced out in terms of triangulation and manipulation within a closed loop system versus wielding true magic that is in alignment. That is the difference. I just broke it the fuck down. What is the whole squaring the circle thing? Is there any significance? Think about this in context to squaring the circle. What the fuck is our reality field locked down into? Basically a cube. So when you throw the circle, you are at a cause point within the fulcrum, the circle of the magician to transcend the fucking lockdown. That's the real secret. You're not going to get this in books, man. And speaking from direct experience, a lot of people that use the circle in a convoluted way where they are into invocation of lesser entities and spirits operate within that lockdown equation that is actually triangulated from the sixth dimension in terms of step down consciousness. So people that talk about ascension to 5D, they're still cut because they don't know the fucking game and they don't know the occult. And they think that they have arrived knowing what you're getting into. Otherwise, it can be highly fucking dangerous working with these alchemical theorems and formulas and stuff like that. But really, it's designed to pull you into alignment. And then you have the star, the pentacle. You stand as the pentacle within the fulcrum. There's earth, air, water, fire, spirit. See how that works? And that's on your floor? What the fuck? That's some <laughs> crazy shit. You need to move into this house? Come on, man. Does that answer your question? Square in the circle? Yes, that gives me a sense of peace. This can be used in the right manner for what I was working on. Let's move to spiritual and temporal. By the way, the Athanasia, my mitochondria, <laughs> I can just working perfectly. By the way, just real quick, this is by August Dunning. It's called the Phoenix Protocol. It has all the PhD references in there. And then it's broken down in a way that's really easy to grasp because I'm not super scientific, but it's legit. Without becoming psychologically sound, You wonder why all the issues and problems are persistent. It's just an observation, but a lot of people that are into spiritual practices are clearly anti-psychological. They don't understand the framework of the psyche or how things actually work in terms of cosmic law, and then take it to the law of correspondence, the planetary high magic, astro psychology, and all these other arts that I fucking study and fucking teach, man. It's just so fucking clear to me, man. Like they don't fucking get it. They don't apply these things to their practice. And all the psychological projections and the fucking bullshit that bleed out in terms of warfare. It's petty. It's convoluted. It's immature, to say the fucking least. How can I show my loyalty to the Emerald Covenant? How do I tap into the codes? How do I bridge that? I'm not going to sell out. Don't sell out. Whatever overlays and distortions are there, as a temptation, you cancel and reject that shit. You bind and banish. You ax it out of your fucking trajectory now. That's really what it boils down to. What are you going to decide in this life? I don't give a fuck about past lives. I don't care yeah. what you've been through. And people want to get caught in the healing void and play the fucking victim and psychologically project and all that, that convoluted fucking bullshit. I am here to transcend and to teach people how to transcend, not to stay caught in the same dramas and full shit. I am a blue flame Melchizedek. Melchizedek means magician. Hence the blue flame healing arts. And that was betrayed not making this shit the fuck up i've experienced it so to remain loyal to the emerald covenant it's a matter of alignment actual templating past all the, the distortions the overlays the mind control the fucking bullshit a lot of people think that they have transcended past a certain fucking point look what the hell is happening in our world more of the economic form and what they're fucking planning people are going to be given a choice in the two main timelines they're planning to fuck up it's a matter of vibrational correspondence with others right Things in terms of the Emerald Covenant, I hail that personally in terms of my templating. I have very, very ancient Syrian B genetics. My son is in cancer. I hail the Syrian star. I hail the Syrian star upon my birth and slide getting into the galactic spiral creation. None of that ultimately fucking matters, though, because really what that covenant institutes is the sovereignty of mankind and learning what it means to master being human and our purpose of incarnation. Because if we don't wake the fuck up and take this world the fuck back, it's the end of the human race, man. especially the timeline that they're working to pull everybody into and all the divide and conquer tactics and the bullshit. It's all stirred up in terms of the procession and people don't know how to navigate consciousness, psychologically speaking. You could have templating, but you're still caught. 
And without accountability, you're still caught. That's a question of whether or not you can trust the people around you to hold you accountable. But you have to observe their behavior as well and know that when psychological projections are happening, it's coming from a place of woundedness, shit that has not been fucking dealt with. And then they try to blame you for it. That's a fucking narc. They want to make me the antagonist of their story. And you got to watch out for that shit. Instead of people facing the fucking mirror, and just hold the fucking mirror. I don't do that shit to people, but I will call stuff out for what the fuck it is. Being in alignment with the Animal Covenant, Helantic Science, Lisa Renee has her Ascension Glossary, and there's other works out there that people can look into. But these by no means is the end all to be all. All of these things are meant to fall. There's a reference point, okay, what are you going to do with it? Make the corrections. That's what me and my crew have been doing. That. There's a lot of distortions that are out there. I have the codes to do so. You could look into it, potentially become a steward. But as far as being a keeper, it depends on your template. Man. And those that are keepers of the mysteries, as myself, usually are the ones that can see past all of the distortions, the overlays, and whatnot that stands in the way in terms of the universal laws of metaphysics, the eternal axioms, how things actually work, and scaling everything through the trivium to see whether or not something is true. Truth can be known. It's not an assumption. It's not an opinion. It's not the my truth movement fucking bullshit because I want to be cool or jump onto a bandwagon because I don't know who the fuck I am. And you're bouncing around from one thing to another, one thing to another, one thing to another. And you're caught in the fucking labyrinth like I've talked about all of these years. This is most people out there still because they have not cultivated a personal pathwork trajectory in terms of their actual templating. They do not know thyself. And so when they get into these things and when they start to do research and study, thinking that they know. They still don't know because they have not laid the proper foundation in terms of protocol. That is the difference with this mystery school. That is the difference in terms of everything that is happening on this end. The Black Earth Library holds over 40,000 books of occult reference material. That is not the only reference. The one I just mentioned in context to the sciences, to the arts, to magic, to the occult. And people want to make dogma out of this shit and turn these concepts into belief systems and then go to battle over who's right and who's fucking wrong, the table of philosophy is not present. And that's the point, because we are not going to evolve otherwise. At that point, it becomes a convoluted belief system. And anything that comes to challenge that, anything that comes to evolve the knowledge, you get the weeping and the gnashing of the teeth and the fucking war bullshit. When we, in terms of our incarnation, are here to end the war. Take it back to cosmic law. Cosmic law is foundation. And so many people out there don't utilize cosmic law in terms of their practice or their platforms. You got to watch out because if it's not spoken about, then they don't have the proper foundation and they can never be in alignment with what they even claim to be in alignment with. Does that make sense? Yeah. I've got the book on Kelantic science because of Michael Dean and some of the other aspects along with it. It was this idea of following the road, pulling this energy up and this access point to the higher force. And first, just how do I destroy the interdimensional thought form parasites, turning the cube into a four petaled flower hourglass portal. I really got that image. I'd love to know more about that. A lot of things in terms of the mathematical constructs and the reversal codes that people don't even know are controlling the reality within the etheric realm, they're locked the fuck down in a loop. That's a closed loop system. It gives birth to itself, it devours itself, it reaches a certain point of evolution, it hits a fucking wall, and then it starts to go into involution or de-evolution. It's been like that the last 26,000 years. You reach a certain point in terms of your physical life, and then you start to decline. That's also a representation of this distortion. For yeah. the actual humans, we didn't die physically. You don't even have enough time in terms of how things have been for as long as they've been. You reach a certain point of knowledge but at that point, you're so physically fucked up that you can't even integrate and transcend. And they've done that on purpose. That's why all the GMOs and the chemtrails are happening, all this stuff. When I speak about the two triangles, it's the upper and the lower template. A really good example of that, take it to the room Gebo. That's next. Two triangles coming in at the point. Is the fire letter code in terms of equal energy exchange? If you give something, you get something in return. You don't just give, 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 and then people are on the fucking take of these forces or whatever the fuck. Be very careful when it comes to energy. Everything is energy. And if you know how to throw energy correctly within the fulcrum, then you can create that portal. But the triangulation happens in terms of the cube, the cube constructs and mathematical reversals. When the two triangles intersect, that is the seal of Solomon. 
you wonder why they flagged that shit because they worship the inverted energy of Saturn. That's the hexagram. The thing about the hexagram is that that is the final point to which things manifest into the physical reality. So again, in terms of how reality has been manipulated, especially in terms of gates and the manipulation happening within the etheric realm in terms of psychosomatics, triangulate the lockdown equation and context, manipulating the spindle of the energy force, and then unwittingly, whether people realize it or not, are manifesting their agendas. They are consenting to their agendas, not knowing the difference because they do not know how to unlock the tesseract. Caught in a closed loop system, and the underworld cycle bullshit that for whatever fucking reason, and I've exposed the reason, I've exposed the cause, people are not transcending for real. And we are here to transcend here on Earth. Ascension happens here. And that star, in context to star sequence ignition, is where they stop it and lock it the fuck down. And you don't know how to pull it apart in terms of the law of equal energy exchange. That's the difference. And that's why the runes in terms of cosmic law, are so fucking important here in context. Because this, in terms, is going back millions of years into prehistory, especially when it comes to our people. And you really got to think about this factor right here. Why the fuck do they have such hatred against the white race? It's not because we're some kind of pieces of fucking shit. It's because we hold the fire tablet in context to the four cardinal directions. And if Caucasians, if white people wake the fuck up, it's the end of their bullshit inverted fucking game. Because all of this in terms of the parasite all goes back to the Sumerian Draconian Empire. This is a fact in truth. I've weighed it. I've seen it. I transcended it. I've exposed it. It cannot be refuted. It's to call out how this specific group that has been infected by the parasitic consciousness work to manipulate our reality. Who through the parasitic consciousness in context targeted every race, tribe, and culture on the face of the earth. Know thy enemy, know thyself. We are not each other's enemies here. The real enemy is something that you cannot see because you have been veiled, fuckers. And I'm trying to tear this back the best that I can. I'm not wasting anybody's time. And this is what needs to happen in order for all of us to transcend the lockdown. You're not going to get through the gates otherwise. The original system of astrology only had seven gates. Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto weren't there before. That's why Saturn is so important because in, unless you work with Saturn and know how to unlock the cube, then you are going to be manipulated in context to that, manifesting what they have implemented in context to mind control. That's how they triangulate the etheric realm. So making connection to the higher force within the circle of the magician, transcending that and making connection. Now you are pulling in grid works of consciousness that are beyond the fucking lockdown. Man. Which is the false, the, the false tenth gatekeeper, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got more of the ether, but he basically through the mind control spell cast. Yes. Fuck, sold out eternal birthright. Right. To through that. God, that's what these watchers did. They can't make connection back to the higher. And we as humans are far more capable of feats and abilities than they are. And that's why they fucking hate mankind. That's why they want to enslave us, to get us to build for them a fuel line into their fucking grid works. And what did they come for? The gold. The gold of consciousness, which is your fucking soul. Every fucking Christmas, the queen bee is taking the honey from our spine. The eye of the heart, that is put into a box represented by these gifts, which is basically like a gammy intra fallopian tube abbreviation coming down your tree, slaying it, basically taking all of that gold and then putting your heart in a box and then giving you their mind on the mental plane. So you get to have your presence in this reality at the expense of your multidimensional grid work that you could tap into if you weren't selling out because you give them your gold accumulated over that cycle and then they give you in return the dead experiences, the hose, all of that shit. There's varying levels to it. A lot of people don't even know what they're richly experiencing. But dude, that video with the nectar when that came into the reality field showing me this rainbow codex that was coming out of the water. I then went to this hotel in Dallas. Their tree had the exact same fucking thing, pulling that energy up and harvesting it from everybody in there. It felt like this is just a mass gold siphoning ritual. I could just put it the nectar video in that and same rainbow color, everything. Um, right. But yeah. The tree used that as a sigil in terms of the mystery school. Very important. But there's a difference between the true universal tree of life, and the dead tree of stagnation, entropy, 
wrought chaos. And we do not hail that tree in context to triangulated, inverted, and twisted knowledge. There's a major difference in context. And you're not going to get the full spectrum perception necessary in terms of the mysteries by reading the books that they have put out for the public. All of those are meant to play on codes in terms of mathematical reversals that pull you into these constructs and context to siphon the goal of consciousness. Correlations that you have observed are 100% correct. So that is the queen bee of all Lilith, Klopothian, inverted da'at cult to siphon our gold of consciousness. Yes, in context to what I conveyed in the Magi Grail Shaman, Betrayal of Thoth and Rise of Asar segment. Absolutely 100% correct in context. Wow. It all goes back to shattered consciousness to Maldek and Cairo. Take it back to the moon. Now we're getting into some deep concepts. People yep. still do not fucking get it. And then they want to come at me saying I'm not in support of the divine feminine force. No, I'm trying to liberate the feminine force, knowing the difference, protect the integrity of what the divine masculine represents in this fucking world to come up against this shit. And in terms, Saturn goes back to the sphere of Bena, which is the feminine force. Wake the fuck up. They still do not fucking get it. When all of this in terms of the procession, take it back to Atlantis and Lemuria, what Michael Tassarion has brought forth in context to the betrayals that took place did not happen with the masculine in this world. Also the fact that they want to eradicate the true alpha, sigma, gamma males in this world. And we're all supposed to bow to the queen be fucking cunt. There's a difference between the Sophianics and the Sophics. Think about what that means. And it was the Sophianics, in terms of Michael Tassarion's research, that were the true enemy of the Sophics, not the men. Our kind were fucking eradicated. And this goes back to the first genocide that ever fucking happened. You think about men working to protect the true feminine force against this, knowing that women are the main fucking target, and it's all convoluted and fucking twisted and fucking inverted in terms of these mathematical reversals and metatronics and all the stuff that I've explained. I'm not making this shit the fuck up. It's there in the history. It's there in the records. Let's talk about mistletoe. What do you hang during Christmas time? Mistletoe, which all goes back to the kiss. The kiss of what? The betrayal. And Loki coerced the blind god Azazoth to kill Balder. What does Balder represent? The human soul. Our essence, the gold. You see how that works? Yeah, it's so fucked up. Well, what's even more beautiful... And what's more amazing is that we have that again now in terms of this school. You cannot fuck with this shit. You cannot fuck with the true masculine force, which I represent. And I am 100% in alignment in terms of protecting the integrity of the true divine feminine force. Women, they still don't understand their true fucking enemy. Our enemy is not one another. It's the fucking watchers. Women becoming men and men becoming women now. Whoa, dude. What the fuck is that? How dare you rise the fuck up and say anything as a true fucking man that's in alignment. That's toxic masculinity. Shut the fuck up. It's not. Not when you have the true history. Not when you really know what's going on. I'm not going to allow the integrity of what I represent and what this mystery school represents to be twisted into some other fucking bullshit. I will never fucking allow it. And I speak to both men and women that can verify this. Men and women are going to back me the fuck up. 100%. Because they've actually done the research and studied to know the fucking difference, let alone maybe experiencing these things. Now, this is a lot I just dropped, but in terms of the procession of where things are, the Phoenix cycles that we are coming into, you can expect all this shit to come up in terms of the past, whether it was this life or past lives. Now has been the time for that. You got to watch out for that shit. Within the context of what I was dealing with, with my counterpart i really liked what you and thunder wizard were talking about where you have shiva and shakti she wants to worship shiva and then shiva's worshiping her through this idea of hey you created all of this shiva's really actually teaching shakti here is my staff and the hermit holding the staff who do i give my staff to and that's this mystery of this perfect empowerment of the male right and, and then as a man have to be very careful who you give your fucking staff to because your staff is your power yeah, yeah. And giving that to fucking anybody, spilling seed. That's your fucking gold. That's your magic, dude. 
And you better protect the integrity of that. But what do they do? Got fucking pornography and all this shit. Robbing power. The pineal gland, when you raise up energy, is like a phallus. Every time you fucking excrete your magic in context, the pineal goes limp. So you build up the energy. You as a man, you want to be a fucking phallus. This has nothing to do with the inverted patriarchal systems of domination and control and all this shit. I'm going to rail against this because the true divine feminine force is going to know the fucking difference. So all of the malignants and all the distortions and all of the overlays, we're ripping through this shit right now going into 2025 and 2028. We're still in a major, major time of healing. And the danger in terms of any sort of betrayal that can take place with anyone is when you betray your own fucking soul when you betray the integrity of your own templating when you betray the essence of who you truly fucking are to compensate and bow to this inverted fucking matriarch that's running shit behind the fucking scenes and it's not to say that all women out there are fucking malignant because they're not the women that know the difference they're going to hear me they're going to hear what i'm saying they're going to want to support the true divine masculine it's not the other way around if that happens, you're nothing but a beta, simp, omega. Men are meant to chase their purpose, chase excellence, and come into alignment with their purpose. You see what I'm saying? The fucking mind game chasing tail. Yeah, the god within becomes a dog chasing after its own tail, chasing tail. It literally is a reversal of our true birthright when we can actually keep our magic within ourselves versus the black tantra. We spill our immortality. For what? A fucking ding that lasts a couple seconds? <laughs> And really? men are doing it all the time because they're a bunch of fucking simps. Exactly. And that process of healing that I was ignorant, of, total unawareness. I think that this healing that you're talking about would hopefully by 2024, 2025, these cycles, the true feminine and true masculine would come together, realizing the difference right. and forget ignorance and actually come into this power that these dark ones are so afraid of. Exactly. So they keep the divide and conquer tactics going and all the psychological projections and fucking bullshit. So that we don't come together the right way in terms of being spiritually mature, knowing the difference in terms of our true history, man. We are not one another's enemies here. There's another force to the old ones, the Weezadak, whatever people want to fucking call it. They are fucking blind. It's the blind God. It's the blind leading the fucking blind. If a blind man or a blind woman leads a blind man or a blind woman, both are going to fall into a pit. And I will never allow myself to fall into a fucking I already rose the fuck up out of that shit. I would not be in the position that I am to do what I do otherwise. And you're going to be tested, man. Shit's going to come at you, man. Guaranteed. When you come into alignment with your purpose, your destiny, you're going to have all sorts of temptations pulling up. Guaranteed. Don't try to fuck with me, man. Thousands have been initiated. Thousands have got the results. Thousands are doing the fucking work, including you, man. Where is that sense of unity consciousness, man? You see, there is no unity consciousness. It's only competition. There's no accountability at that point. This correlates to the question that you asked me from the get, how to unlock the Tesseract, right? How to one do this triangulation. And see, this is something that's never happened throughout the course of history and the timelines. It's never happened on the level that it needs to happen in order for us to transcend. It hits that wall. All this programming gets kicked the fuck out and it gets sucked back into the fucking abyss over and over and over and over again. I've already transcended this shit. I'm standing there at the gate, like, hold this fucker open. Who's going to pass through? There's a difference between the true gatekeepers versus the false gate. If people do the work in context, they are going to get the results. And the results is all that fucking matters. Are you getting results in terms of your path work? One danger, and I've seen this happen over and over again, is that people get caught in the healing void and they want to use their past or whatever fucking woundedness and trauma they've experienced as an excuse to unconsciously keep that fucking cycle going it's a karmic cycle that's the wheel of samsara you're caught you're not slaying the shadow dragon you're being devoured by it, thinking that you're ascending would you say that this Ouroboros, the inverted full car that goes into the pit instead of actually takes the right leap the cycle that keeps happening in the magic mirror gate where you either get raked the fuck out or the shadow dragon consumes you. Do you think that that is also within the context of relationship with other rings? Is that ring an eternality within the corporeal based off love being a beggar? Or is there actually something to commitment between two people realizing the difference, 
coming into that state of union after the healing, because I see what you're saying, because you can get caught in the healing void, being unwilling to move on. If you know that we both messed this up within the context of the timelines, we were supposed to rise together. And while we were together, we were ignorant, we weren't ready. How do you know when to leave the karmic cycle and take the full card and leap the fuck out? Without connection to the higher force and the higher force being the main focus, union is never going to culminate or reach the zenith of its potential in terms of masculine and feminine coming together, let alone divine masculine and divine feminine coming together without the proper knowledge and wisdom, knowing the difference in terms of how all of this has been fucked up and why it's not working. This all goes back to the union between you and your own fucking soul and connection to the higher force. That is the most important thing you will ever experience. It's not the connection with the divine feminine or the feminine force. That would then be saying that the power is outside of myself, whereas the true union with me and the higher force is the power has always been within. I don't need right. to external hierarchy. Right, because if you do that, you're going to try to get from the woman something you cannot get from her, and then you end up sucking her fucking dry vice versa. In hindsight, if the two get it, and the two are doing the real work, then potentially, yes, in terms of templating and codes and a lot of different things can potentially come together. But without that factor, it ain't fucking happen. And then we wonder why the divide and conquer between men and women is all across. This is why. So with that, everything that me and Michael got into so far has been very important to at the very least consider anyone listening to this segment. And to that, I'm gonna pull this into a break. This is Septic Esposa, Black Earth Productions, Blue Flame, Healing Arts, and Occult Science. Me and Mr. Ivy will be back after the break.
We are back now from break. This is Sethic Esposa, Black Earth Productions, Blue Flame, Healing Arts, and Occult Science. And now to continue with Initiate Michael Ivey. The healing process that people need to undergo, it's between you and the higher force. It's not between you and your woman. Never take your shit to your woman as a man. That is not anything that is in alignment with the divine, let alone malignant men that take their shit out on their women, on their fucking family, and vice versa. That is a sick, inverted, twisted fucking cycle of bullshit, and whatever the fuck overlays and distortions and all that shit, I've already transcended it, man. That's a fucking joke to me. People want to come and fucking project all their guilt and shame fuck off. And then we wonder why. I see it so clearly, psychological, as a psychological professional, as a MAGA grail shaman. And until one can navigate the waters and, and walk on water, you're going to be dependent on all mommy daddy archetypes. Either it's mommy government, daddy government, the inversion of the paternal roles because the child never grew up right. and knew the difference. That's what I'm learning now with this idea of being a debtor versus a creditor. You can't discharge a debt with a debt note, with an IOU, a promise to pay. And we have to acknowledge that these banks aren't, aren't lending us credit. We are creating the credit with our signature and they are then hypothecating, abrogating, subrogating, and selling that promise to pay to other banks via fractional reserve banking. We create the credit. We are the source of all of the power. You use their system against them as leverage and fuck them. Yeah. It's all a fucking game. There's no such thing as money. There's no such thing as debt. That's a House fucking Joint lie. Point resolution 192, 1933. If anything, that which is of true value, gold, we have it in liquid form. Come on. But then there's the gold egg. Now talk about that with me now. Go ahead. I'm still learning that process. I would love okay, to hear. Remember what Gulveg actually represents. She's a husk of the old ones that just appeared in Vanaheim and started teaching Freya and the Vanir, dark sorcery, in order to siphon the gold, not only from their realm, but the parasitic consciousness and to the resurgence into the nine worlds also infected the Aesir. It's the cause point for the first war, man. Odin speared her in the fucking hall. Speared her thrice because she was a parasitic fucking husk that they were trying to eradicate. This is how this parasitic force operates. It's divide and conquer between the Aesir and the Vanir. That war of the gods happening within us, caught in that Atlantean cycle for the last 26,000 years, 50,000, take it to 500,000 years, a million years, I don't give a fuck. All I know is it happened. Humanity has not caught it because they don't know the occult. They don't know how things actually work. And we do not know who our true enemy is. And it's not one another. But it comes in guys, and without spiritual discernment, man, you're not going to be able to fucking gauge it. All these beta simps, man, they're just fucking seduced into the corridors of the mouth of fucking hell, devoured by this fucking force. The fucking vampire, man. It's the war between the weef wolf werewolves and the fucking vampires, man. It's the vampires that cannot come out into the true light. That very thin shell, in terms of a husk to the parasite, is going to be fucking eradicated. They got to hide. I do my work in the day. I put my work out public. If I'm dropping occult knowledge. You're not going to get anywhere else, dude. And, I, and I'm ready. I'm ready to stand up knowing the difference and start coming into that connection with the higher force and letting that guide me to what this path work is. I really liked, too, this idea of grawl points, energy meridians, inner stargates, as within, so without. And the idea we are our own current sea moving through this universal tree of life. We let them take our sight, eye of raw, and do with it what they will, while also siphoning our gold. We are then left within this very limited form of reality, and we're not able to navigate in ways that we were used to. The DNA can't actually coil into multi-helical formats because it's in this 2D limited strand. Whereas once we start coming into our power, our eye I is our own to navigate and we can come into navigation of these various grail points, stargates, and, and the inner work becomes manifest in the outer as we navigate this tree, no longer bound by bullshit. We are in a duel, but we are not meant to be in a duel with one another. Our true enemy in context is something that people can't even see. That's the trick in terms of triangulation, divide and conquer tactics. You think of all the fucking wars that have taken place, take it back to the first one and the cause point for it. And it was all designed to siphon the gold of consciousness. It was to destroy Eden, Eden, Idun, the goddess, the true goddess, I-D-U-N-N. -N. And I hail Idun, the true divine feminine, trying to protect the integrity of what that represents, man. That's the fucking garden. And we as men, the true masculine, let alone divine masculine, at the fucking ramparts, stand your fucking ground. 
and not be drawn out on a provocation or a fucking trigger. They teach that in the art of war. Do not allow yourself to be provoked. And when you strike, you don't let them see it coming. That's how we operate. Man. We have to come up with a strategy because at this point, it's a lot of provocation. It's a lot of trigger points that can manifest the dynamic that two people are triggered the fuck out. There's no wisdom in that particular situation. It's just a trigger fest. And that, again, is a play out of this war happening on a multidimensional level. The gods are caught as well. When Odin came to me, he said, we are caught. I think one thing you had said was we are a cosmic detective of the highest order. The gods come to us on our terms. We are the spearhead. They are looking to us as to what we were going to choose. And it was a risk coming in at this point. So to be honored by them in terms of interface, Odin consulted a seeress in terms of the first war and stated clearly. So is it the same convoluted fucking cycles that, that we have been caught in the fates of gods and men and the norns are weeping because of what they've been forced to weave because we don't know what we are intending on an unconscious level this is how unaware people are man because they are fucking controlled people are learning about mind control but they still do not know how it operates on levels necessary in order to transcend they just see the surface of it they're still dealing with surfaces they just see the effect they don't see the cause to the effect. And that's how the law of cause and effect is manipulated in terms of polarity, vibration, rhythm, all of the cosmic laws manipulated against us. Take it back to the first one. If the soil of mind is toxic, putrid, and poisoned, what do you think people are going to yield in their lives in terms of their experiences? So you got to get in there and you got to till that shit multidimensionally, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, temporally, multidimensional. All of these things I teach. Yeah, my North Node was just ringing, you know, this last five days, burnt the shit out of it. I have no use for it. And I don't want that in my life anymore. And this idea that we're coming to a place, or at least we had been in a place before me, this garden that we were being called to protect, that you are actively doing so. When you had a thought, it would manifest like that. And a lot of people wouldn't be ready for that level of power or manifestation. Tilling that on a multidimensional level really resonates with me because I would have to be in a really healed place to even have that because everything would come by thought. It would be important to be pretty centered. Right. And those that hail the original universe, like myself, understand and know this concept. That's why you're not fucking ready. That's why you're not allowed to cross certain gates, because if you did, you would destroy the universe. One fucking thought. In our universe, Midgard, it's a less progressive universe, so it takes time and space for things to manifest. This is the graduation ground. I did not have to fucking incarnate. I chose to come here. I'm trying to protect the integrity of the true mother principle. As far as the inverted, convoluted fucking abyss bullshit that gave birth and rise to the parasitic consciousness, it can kiss my fucking ass because it is not the true mother principle. And all the stuff to Gnosticism and the Sophia myth, it's all fucking bullshit, man. It plays on our sympathetic capacity for something that's malignant and tricks you to feel sorry for it. Why should I have sympathy for anything that's malignant? That is not choosing holding itself accountable to what it birthed. That's the inverted matriarch, dude, that targeted the true divine feminine force in our world, let alone wiped out the true masculine in place of the Watchers. Without getting a clear picture, pull back enough, and then you get caught up in that fucking melodrama. Dude. Seduced by the dark side. Be aware of the seduction. It's the trickster. It's the shadow blood brother of fucking Odin, motherfuckers. And Loki's consort is the ultimate expression of Gulveg. Pyrokin rides on the back of the wrathful wolf Fenrir. With two fucking snakes, two vipers biting the inside of his mouth. Poisoning and inverting the principle of the true beast, which they are in fear of, the human spirit. We become more terrifying than them. And that's what they don't want us to fucking realize. That is what they are afraid of. And it's not some malignant force that's going to go out on a fucking rampage and just completely fucking annihilate. No, we're going to protect the integrity of the fucking garden and pull this shit back into alignment so that it can flourish. So that our generation and future generations get it. So whether it's on a grand scale, the integrity of your own fucking path work, and you don't get caught up and you don't get devoured by that. Yeah, being provoked and tempted out of the garden 
coming into my own accountability. It's like, if you want to go to a hotel, you got to use a fucking driver's license. And you know full well that that means that you're a fucking slave citizen. So if you go somewhere that requires you to use a driver's license, you probably should think twice about that. If you use a passport, that would mean you're a federal citizen. That means you're subject to the queen. And if we're talking about land of America, home of the free and a brave, the whole idea of identification and the id versus the ego and the superego, to really be accountable would mean to come into my own independence and, and to cultivate things within without having to go out and be dependent. And if all of us were doing this in a community, we would have this interdependence again that wasn't so bankrupt and Sestake trusts and all the nonsense. And I feel like I was birthed into this family to clear some of that. It needs to be healed because as it is who my father was and who my mother is, it, it needs to be healed. I call her today and she's like, I put up this shield of the blood of Jesus and you were the first one to be able to break it. And I was just like, can we just stop this blood of Jesus thing? Salvation really means maritime salvage. So they're salvaging your vessel Corrections need to be made in order for this threshold to be crossed. Saturn rules Aquarius, and it's going to go one or two fucking ways. It's either going to be AI or the original fucking timeline. That's the prophecy. It's spoken about aeons. Take it back to what happened, the true history. And I have memory of this. It's not some convoluted fucking fantasy. I've done research and study. The men that survived the fucking slaughter vowed to reincarnate in order to institute the reckoning. To pull things back into alignment, to remind the true divine feminine force of what they have been stripped from, it didn't just go away. That religion, let alone any other religion, was convoluted to create victims. You're already condemned in terms of being birthed into this fucking world. Yeah, in the sine wave. Right, the sines and sine cosine, the red and the blue, the triangulation. You get it, man. Nothing is transcended because they control it on higher levels, both sides of the fucking equation. It's the same thing with the left wing and the right wing brotherhoods. That's why I'm not down with teaching in context to the left wing or the right wing. All of that in terms of legacy and the betrayals that took place back in Egypt was when magic became corrupt. That is the crux of the procession. Everything that came forth, the Setian consciousness, the cult of Aton, which wiped out almost everything in terms of the original legacy. And my connections to Egypt and, and all of this to my ancient Egyptian high priest, pharaonic genetics in terms of Arcturus and Orion. This is where I hail the fucking memory. Back to the Orion Wars and all this shit. And I've already seen the end equation. It's just a matter of standing our ground, riding this the fuck out, seeing it for what it is, and claiming our sovereignty and doing the real work. I am trying to protect the integrity of the true mother principle. And none of us men that knew the difference in, in the ancient past ever fucking betrayed that principle and that's the correction i'm not saying that the malignant patriarch isn't a fucking factor because it is it all played out in terms of the triangulation throughout the century you got fucking neo-feminists and then you got MGTOW. both are fucking goddamn fucking toxic absolutely it's bullshit on both sides of that fucking inverted equation both are fucking insane they ain't getting the point fuckers that's to continue anything else you want to get into what you said about Wotan and the Red Queen, the transmitter and receiver, opener and a closer of these cycles into the new mythos, instead of throwing the baby out with the bathwater as we come into what you were saying, births this reality field that is not inverted. When we look at this in context to the triangulation of the old cycles, my question is, well, one, I want to know a bit more about Wotan and the Red Queen, the transmitter, the receiver, the mastering will in that alignment. So that I can be a part of the biospiritual regenesis, acknowledge guilty as charged as far as my ignorance. But now that we're putting all of this on record, coming into accountability, how does all of that play in? Hold your position as the masculine force, the masculine force that is in alignment, not the malignant patriarchal fucking bullshit. That's where shit got fucked up. And all of the goddess cults in context go back to that malignance, suppression of the true divine masculine. So things in context of Wotan and the Red Queen, what was conveyed in terms of the ancient Olmec Mayan animist tradition, Pakal Wotan. It's like I've stated, all of humanity hails the Great North, and it's going to take time for people to catch the fuck up to what has been presented on Black Earth Productions. Archaeological evidence presented via the Bach Saga, Jim Chesner, and what he's presented. It cannot be refuted. And this is the history in terms of everything that I've shared. It's also been conveyed. This cannot be refuted. He was a man. 
He is a man. We have to stand our ground in terms of honoring the true divine masculine force. That's not going to fucking kowtow. That's not going to fucking put up with this malignant fucking bullshit, whether from the matriarch or the patriarch. I don't give a fuck. I'll call men out just the fucking same. You pieces of fucking shit. You fucking weak ass fucking cowards. Think about all the wars that have taken place. It's the lizard landowners that want to control the whole goddamn fucking thing and then enslave mankind to their constructs. Inflation, deflation, then acquisition and theft of property through this aspect of taxes. So you don't actually ever own your land because you only have this balance of equitable title versus legal title. And it's always in fee for fee simple. And so we don't actually have the letters patent, the true land ownership. And the bank just considers you dead and now you're our stock and then we'll just harvest your gold. Yeah, you know, and that's why owner finance is a way better fucking option instead of going through a fucking bank. It's all a fucking game. But the crux of everything, what the fuck are you going to do? We have to gain leverage within their fucking empire. Use their system against them. That's the fucking key. It's not going to be reformed. What they really want to own is your fucking soul. As long as you own that within their fucking empire, they can't fucking touch you, man. That is the most valuable thing you will ever fucking have and own unto yourself. And lands and resources and shit like that, they come and go. They're meant to be used in a way to where we can perpetuate our legacies here. But those wars, they have continued and there's just way too many people that are not woke. They think they're woke, but they're not because there's so many layers in terms of the veils. What would you say constitutes true sovereignty? Is it owning land or is it owning the land in terms of your vessel? Exactly. Your fucking soul, the true landscape, the inner landscape, as above, so below. That's all that matters at the end of the day. If you don't own your own body and thus your own soul, then, then you're just a drone with a number and you're part of the hive mind. But yeah, 100%. The dichotomy, the crux, the paradox when it comes to these malignant fucks is they don't own their own soul. And someone that has a soul wouldn't do that shit. They got to compensate. They got to fuck with the temporal existence. They got to fuck with our physical lives which in turn is the manipulation of the mental and emotional capacities in terms of psychosomatics and cuts us off from spirit. That yeah, it makes you guilty for the parasite. Oh, I'll just love the parasite and it will eventually change. And No, and you see the madness of the realms these people are fucking caught in. They are fucking insane. It's a fucking joke to me, dude. I've been here, done this so many fucking times. Without having healthy boundaries, we're not going to be able to cultivate the inner landscape to manifest what we need to do, what we are here to do. This fucking system is insanely fucking ridiculous, man. It's stupid. It's dumb. They are also slaves to it. Just look at New York and how people, they claim to own the air rights. Right. It just keeps getting more insane the deeper you go into their fucking inverted and twisted construct. All meant to fuel on the watchers feast. But people are too stupid to fucking see it for what it is and make the decision to come into alignment. Quantum grammar that's a field of study and research that most people don't go into. The context and syntax in terms of sentence structure, what do you actually mean? When you go into court, it's a fucking word game. It's the court, yep. the law, the ba'al. Yeah, show me the correct communications, parse syntax, grammar for the avoidance of the perjury. When you walk in there and they are babbling at you, you have to use syntax and quantum grammar because no law or fact be tried in their court. I need a list of all the definitions so that we're on the same page as to what these words mean. Because you're right, they're called words of art. So they have multiple interpretations. Right. And do you understand? Do you stand under? I mean, that's the most basic one in the book. But yeah, it's... Well, it's I crazy. understand and overstand, motherfucker. Exactly. <laughs> I understand and overstand. I will never understand them because they are insane. That's just one example. But going back to your question, things in terms of the Wotan, you know, the Red Queen, that is a representation of the divine masculine and divine feminine. True union. Do you think for one fucking second that they want the true divine masculine and divine feminine coming together in terms of correspondence and manifestation? Fuck no. They're going to do everything they can to institute divide and conquer tactics to keep that from happening. And unless the two in question are, again, doing the real work, it's not going to fucking happen, man. When you really come up against what's going on and you can't see it for what it is or navigate accordingly, press up against the malignance, filtering through a lens of perception that is fucking skewed. Right. And the mystery of the sacramental cup. And when I think about the true union between the masculine and the feminine, it comes back to the Christos Odin archetype. It is so beautiful, yet so inverted. You hung on a tree 
so that you could shed the skin and move on to the higher purpose of it all. And the serpent of wisdom that cannot shed the old skin is not going to evolve. It will die. You will become dead. So we take on the death and rebirth cycle. That's transformation. There's no arrival point here, man. But without the proper foundation, you just get caught in the fucking labyrinth. And you think you're evolving, but you're on the fucking goddamn hamster wheel. You're on the burning merry-go-round. You don't realize it's burning. It's going the fuck down, fuckers. It's a bunch of clown bullshit. And I can't convey certain things to individuals because they're not up to the capacity to even receive the message. And the difference in terms of IQ distinction, people that are up on a higher IQ capacity, people that are of a lower IQ capacity, it's not going to make any fucking sense. And unless those people do the fucking work to transcend and pierce the fucking veils, then nothing that I'm going to say or anybody else in the future that's even more advanced teaching is going to make any sense. You've got to build up your capacity. It's a lifelong dedication. You're not going to become a master overnight. And a lot of people think that because they read a few articles or watched a few fucking videos that they're fucking woke and they still don't get it. And the reason why, again, they don't have the proper foundation. This is why I have constructed the mystery school the way that I have so that people do have the proper foundation to not only navigate the focus material, but to navigate anything in terms of study with the Black Earth Library or anything else out there. It's not going to be navigated otherwise. It's just caught in all the nest traps and snares and assumptions and opinions. And when one person sees a six, the other person sees a nine. I love that. The, the three, nine, six, you need the zero there. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That is the circle of the magician. That's where you bring forth your manifestations. You bring it through the vortex within the fulcrum of the circle. That's what it is. Yes. And, and all of these inversions, they get rid of zero. Without the fulcrum, you can't get a 360 degree view of anything that you are being triangulated into. Mm -hmm. And it's triangulations within triangulations within triangulations. That's the fractal virus. It fractals out to the one, two, four, five, seven, eight equation, which again goes back to the cube lockdown. And without knowing how to throw the circle of the magician correctly, you are operating within that triangulation fractal virus and will continue for infinity. Caught in the time and space, lockdown, inverted energies of Saturn. Hence why the high priestess needs to be before the magician. Otherwise, you have this endless feedback loop. Yeah, and I explained that in the first three gates video. And you can see what I'm saying, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still discovering what it means for me in context of accountability because equity does not aid a volunteer. As I'm getting this 360 view of where I've been pulled out, coming back into the fulcrum, I just want to stay in the primordial. <laughs> <laughs> but not really sure how that works still in context of the 396. I, I would love to learn more about that. Right. So again, even as Nikola Tesla stated, who, by the way, was a master earth magician in context to practical magic. If you come to the knowledge of the 396, that you will have a key to the universe to unlock gates, but take it further, which he didn't mention. How does that apply to you? in terms of your template. Anybody out there wants to know doors to initiation into our mystery school are open. And I'm definitely gonna take it deeper with you, Michael, as things progress, and as we do more follow-up sessions in terms of your initiation into the mystery school, like we are right now. And so to that, I'm gonna pull this segment into another break. This is Seth Kisposa, Black Earth Productions, Blue Flame, Healing Arts, Occult Science. We will be right back after this short break.
back now to continue with Michael Ivey. This is Seth Esposa, Black Earth Productions, Blue Flame, Healing Arts, and Occult Science. I was burning the parts of the astro-psychological tree in context to my roots within the 3D and all the shit that I just needed to get rid of and throw away to this circle that I empower myself from. Getting your own house in order, that is just critical to being able to actually manifest can't blame anybody else. There's no outside savior within that context. If I co-sign a paradigm, let's say I've got wearables or biometrics, or if I want to manifest in accordance with this North node, then I need to play the part. And that has to manifest on the 3D. Otherwise it's contradistinction. It's repelling what I want versus what I'm willing to consent to, even in my own house. And if you are not the master of your domain, you are a fucking slave. Right. So when zero comes into alignment with nine, you are now taking control of the wand of fire and wielding magic the correct way to where it's not manipulated in terms of triangulation. On an unconscious level, you're manifesting shit that you don't want to be experiencing. And then you're wondering why certain things aren't working because you're not taking enough time to get a 360 degree view at the fucking summit in terms of the hermits. He stands at the threshold between worlds and universes. Someone that has been through the cycles of death and rebirth in terms of the alchemical rites of initiation over and over and over and over and over again. And people can choose to disagree. I don't give a shit because I see where you are in terms of your scaling the cliff. And once you reach that summer yourself, it's going to blow your fucking mind. And you're going to see what you're capable of. And you're not going to be dealing with shit that's going to suck you into the fucking abyss and seal the fucking rips. So now... You are bridging worlds and universes from within. Take it back to the inner landscape. That has no choice but to manifest in your life. That's how the universe will meet the intention that you have set forth. If people want instant gratification, it's not going to happen because true magic, you have to build up enough energy within the fulcrum to manifest certain things. And some things manifest quicker than others. It just depends. But this is where we go into practice in terms of focus. And whatever you give your focus to is what you give energy to. And if you give enough focus and energy in terms of a certain intention, it will inevitably manifest. And so if we're not the master of our thought and emotion, again, and trained ourselves how to think things on purpose and feel into things on purpose with focused intention, then you're never going to be able to manifest things that are in alignment with true intelligence. But that's the battle. That's the fucking war. That's the etheric realm. That's where triangulation in terms of nine manipulated took zero out of the equation. Throwing one up in front of zero, making 10, to the false gatekeeper of the 10th ether. Yeah, and everybody's just running around, say 10. They just say 10 everywhere. The inverted cross in the Vatican, and everybody's crossing themselves out, and you have the cross for the Christians, whereas this equal cross, the circle around it, which is the feminine enveloping, not constricting, but enveloping the power of the masculine. And that is the circle of the magician. That is the Rossi cross sigil, the Magi Grail Shaman. On my family crest, I cannot be fucked because I know who the fuck I am. If people want to come try and challenge me, just wait. People want to come try and challenge my students, just fucking wait. You're in for something else. Not because we want war. We end the war and remind people of the birthright, the rights of initiation, the actual experience of transcendence and manifestation of the quality of life that you can. In the face of all of this malignance and inversion and twisting and corrupt fucking grid works, all of that shit, man. It's just a matter of what we decide, knowing the difference. And... Certain things I know I cannot get into with people because they're not ready. I've been able to go a little bit deeper with you because you have the capacity. When you start to master the wand of fire, again, the positive and negative charge of the energy force in alignment with the third energy, that is where you become dangerous. That is where you become more terrifying. And see, people that really wake the fuck up and want to be initiated and want to know the difference they can, just like you did. All of us, we are 100% fucking sovereign. And in the future, when temple rites of initiation are presented, that's when I'm going to start getting into the true universe and true life with people. But you have to have reached that summit, uh, that space between this world and every other world and universe, knowing how to wield the wand of fire correctly, mastering their archetypal gates, zero through nine. And the tarot teaches us how to bridge worlds and universes as within, as without. But you got to build these things within yourself. Throw yourself into challenge. Rise the fuck up and become better It's like a motherfucker that you warn. You say, hey, don't put your hand on the fucking stove. They put their hand on the fucking stove and then they blame you for it. 
Yeah, wheat for the ramifications of the, the transubstantiation of the needle craft is called Nova. And I'm just thinking of these people who went for it. They won't have the ignition. There will be no one else to blame directed towards stamping out the fire that you're talking about. They want the soul spark eclipsed again to where you can't even process the gates of true intelligence. And at that point, in terms of your perception being skewed in context to that process, you think you can fucking see, but you're blind to that equation, to those inverted constructs and mathematical reversals. Without enough proper knowledge and wisdom, people are going to be able to see clearly. They've been conditioned to see themselves as less than. So the minute you start rising the fuck up, the minute you start speaking out, your energy agitates a cleansing with them. It's the force of creation itself. It's the power of life force energy in terms of union and its capacity in terms of potential. This is what gave birth to worlds and universes in context. Limited in capacity and forgotten our place as men and women. The universe used to be our playground. Caught. But think about a connection that blasts you off to the fucking stars. Moon in the eighth house wants that more than anything else. The depth of your capacity reaches well beyond the capacity of most. So with that energy specifically... You can definitely go there within yourself. And people are going to be given a choice. If we do not become more terrifying than these pieces of fucking shit, then it's done. So our capacity in terms of co-creation, in terms of our connection to the higher force and our capacity to seed vision, we seed life, we seed vision. There would be no seed without us. It's seed and womb. It's not just womb. It's the seed as well. Remember what I say about how we pass through all the gates in terms of incarnation? If you look at a human egg that comes forth, a fallopian tubes of a woman, it looks like a sun. And in terms of the seed of life, penetrates that gate. Without that seed, there is no fucking life. And without that gate, there is no fucking life. There is no coming through into this realm as above, so below. And you ain't passing through that gate without the seed of vision. It ain't happen. That's how they fuck with creation or poison the seed in terms of the parasite, black, the sun consciousness. Whoa, I got chills multiple times when you were talking about this. I mean, that golden egg is like, this is like the, the, the feminine and the masculine holding the space for the reality field within the context of this perfect give and take that then brings forth the golden egg, roots in the reality field, everything that we're talking about, this perfection so that people can, so that we can come in and experience and rise and come into our own gold. And we covered so many aspects to everything. And I'm just profoundly grateful to have had this conversation with you today. Michael, it was good having you on. Appreciate your questions and get the nectar out to you again, your investments, man, because it's obvious that you've been getting the results in terms of everything. Thank you so much. Plugging everything, everything in terms of initiation into the mystery school. The doors are open. And when it comes to your eternal spirit, to blood code, soul code essence is to state that blood is a hydrodynamic non nutrient fluid that connects the sun to mitochondria wirelessly and if you want to learn how to ignite the star core from within the essence of who you truly are then check out the website at blacklit productions with ac.com click on the services page things in terms of rights with the initiation session remain at a 20 percent off discount for those to whom it's meant and as to other services, there's many different kinds of readings and counsel that I attribute with the Mystery School and also full access to the Black Earth Library, which again holds over 40,000 books of occult reference material. At the first phase of initiation, the second phase of initiation in terms of becoming an adept will take you into Ulfidnar training and in the future, Temple Rites of Initiation is going to be presented. As far as updates that are coming with the Mystery School, I am going to be implementing a group class where everyone that has been initiated will be able to show up and we will be able to get into things even deeper in terms of a group dynamic. But as with everything, initiation, laying the proper foundation is key and nobody is getting into these classes otherwise. And in terms of the products page, been released on the Black Earth Productions website. We have merch available with the Serpent of Wisdom Hood and the Star of the Alphar shirt in both large and medium sizes. And as with the Nectar of Athanasia, it will remain at a 50% off discount for everyone that has been initiated, as well as those that come to be initiated in terms of your credentials with the Mystery School. Thunder God Root Vine is available. 
uh, Weapons Forge is also very eager to forge for you your custom design of a magical weapon or tool. It's a ritual work. Something that is 100% unique in all the world. So as to put your mark in terms of legacy. And finally, to the apothecary, we also have available many things in terms of practical alchemy, herbs, metals, other tinctures, and minerals are also available. For anybody interested, send me a direct email at Black Earth Productions with an S at the end, dot com. And so as to move things into wrapping this up. Sunflower, weary of time, who countest the steps of the sun, seeking after that sweet golden climb, where the traveler's journey is done, where the youth away by wanton desire, and the pale virgins shrouded, arise from their graves and aspire the sunflower wishes to go. The modest rose puts forth a thorn, the stupid sheep and the threatening goat, while the white lily, white, shall love in sheen delight, nor a thorn, nor a threat, strain the true beauty bright. This is Seth Gisposa, Black Earth Productions, Blue Flame, Healing Arts, and Occult Science. Get ready for the next segment. More is going to be coming soon in terms of the platform. Be empowered. Be encouraged. Oh.